On today's Slice Print Review, we are looking at the Cetus 2 3D printer. This machine prints two colors at the same time, and it does it with little to no waste. Now, I hope you like this rocket and this tree stump because you're going to be seeing a lot of them as they are the only models I was able to complete before it all went up in smoke. And here we go. Folks, welcome. I am Leo of Prince Leo 3D. Thank you so much for joining me today on what is a video that we're gonna showcase the Cetus 2 3D printer from Tier Time. This is a 3D printer that is looking to produce two color models all out of a single nozzle. That's right, that means two filament enter, one filament leave. And it's looking to do that with little to no purge. Oftentimes when we see a two color system through a single nozzle, there will be a ton of excess purge material while the original color is flushed from the nozzle and the new color needs to enter. Tier Time is looking to introduce on the fly filament swapping where the original filament is retracted very quickly and a new color of filament is introduced and then extruded through the nozzle. This quick swap is going to result in a very low amount of purge necessary. Now, now why would we want a 3D printer that can print in two colors? Well, whenever we see a virtual model online, whether we're gonna download it or buy it, they're often decked out in many colors. They catch your eye and they're great to look at. However, when we finally print that model, it can be somewhat underwhelming because we have to picture all these models as a single color. And that's because 99% of the 3D printers available only print a single color of filament with some ability to manually swap filaments by pausing the printer while it is operating. Well, the Cetus 2 is looking to diverge from that and it's looking to provide two color prints without any user intervention. You would set up a two color print in the slicer, hit print, and the Cetus 2 is going to do all the works about getting the correct color of filament for you. Now, this will allow us some really cool models and unique designs that would be nearly impossible if we were to manually swap the filament for each color change. I was given the opportunity to test this 3D printer. It was sent to me free of charge from zbanks.com. They are a third party advertising agency. They work with a lot of different companies. Tier Time is one of them. When I was given this product, there is no money or compensation involved. Just at the end, there would be a video review, which you're watching right now. They don't get access to my script. They don't tell me what to say. They don't even get access or early access to this video, unless they're a Patreon, which I just set up because all my patrons get slightly early access to my videos. And they don't get any other sort of oversight as to what I'm going to say. All these opinions are my own and you're definitely gonna believe me because by the end of this video, if they had saw it, they probably wouldn't have wanted me to publish this. Now, if you end up liking this 3D printer, you think maybe you wanna purchase it, I will add a link in the description. You can buy it through there. It doesn't cost anything extra, but it will give me a little bit of affiliate compensation for buying it through that link. I was only capable of getting a total of four prints finished with this 3D printer before the main board sent out smoke signals and let me know it had had enough. Now, in general, I don't like to review or give an opinion on any product, any 3D printer, unless I get nearly 200 plus hours minimum of printing time with it. Once the main board gave out on me, the company offered a new one. In the time period I waited for that main board, I was able to explore the slicer in depth. And then by the time the main board got to me, I no longer wanted to install it. That's right, I didn't even bother installing the main board. I had seen all I needed to see, and I could give you my opinion just based on that. So I wanna break this video down into two sections. The first part will be the components, the body, the frame, what this printer is made out of. The second is the slicer. And for this 3D printer, we're using Tier Time's proprietary slicer, Up Studio. The slicer for a printer like this is of utmost importance. It is how we're going to paint the different colors on our models to eventually see printed on our build plate. It needs to be easy to navigate and intuitive. For now, let's take a step back, 30,000 foot view of what this printer is made of. This printer is solid and it is heavy. Most of the frame and body are made of metal. Now they do use some less often seen connectors and cabling, and now that's not a downside, but you might not find any spare parts lying around in your scrap drawer like you might expect when building a 3D printer. The build size for this is 200 millimeters by 300 millimeters in the X and Y, 
and it has a vertical height of 300 millimeters in the Z axis. The X and Y axes use end stops for homing, and the Z uses a nozzle force sensor to home. The nozzle will touch the glass build plate, and that force sensor will detect it. And this is also what it uses to probe the bed and create a bed mesh. Now it only probes 12 points on this large 200 by 300 millimeter glass bed, which really is not enough. And we have no ability to change that because the firmware is proprietary, meaning it is locked, unable to be edited, compiled, or viewed. I also don't think we have control over the Z offset. TierTime uses wireless communication software called Wand to talk to the 3D printer while it's printing. It didn't work well for me. I'm not sure if you have the ability to control the Z offset through that, but I was never able to determine it. On the back of this printer, there is a filament runout sensor for each of the two filaments, and it comes equipped with a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. Replacements are available through the website, and the only other option in size is a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Nestled under the bed is the main board. Now again, mine only lasted four prints before it went up in smoke. For the slicer, again, Tier Time is offering a proprietary slicer called Up Studio. Now normally, when a 3D printing company offers a slicer, it will usually be a reskin or a fork of an existing slicer. For instance, Voxel Lab Slicer Voxel Maker is just a fork of Cura. Quiddy's new slicer, Quiddy Slicer, is just a fork of Prusa Slicer. And that's because those slicers, Cura and Prusa, are tried and tested. They are reliable, they are accessible, and they are very easy to navigate, and most people have some understanding of how they work. With UpStudio, it looks familiar, it feels similar, but ultimately the experience is none of those things. It is really hard to navigate and extremely cumbersome. Now, UpStudio is available free of charge from Tier Time's website. If you are considering this 3D printer, please go to the website, download the slicer, and import some models. Mess around with it. Try and get a handle of how it works. I really want you to get some experience with the slicer before you spend money on this printer. Because for me, this slicer made this entire experience really awful. I hate to be so rude and say that. I'm sure a lot of smart people, a lot of great minds went into making this 3D printer and the slicer, but it was really just not a good experience for me. And it's not something I would normally recommend to one of my friends, colleagues, coworkers, or viewers out there. So please get your experience with the slicer before you make any decisions. When you first open the program, WAN 3D Printing Manager also opens. This is Tier Time's wireless communication app that is packaged with UpStudio. This only worked one time to actually connect to the printer for me. Every time thereafter, it failed to connect. I don't have a lot of information for you besides that. Now looking at the slicer, the first thing I want to mention is the navigation. Moving this camera view around is just a little tricky, maybe a little trickier than normal. The focal point that the camera is anchored to is our 3D Benchy right here in the corner. And the camera spins around that. If I wanted to move it statically, I can do that. If I want to zoom in, zoom out, I can do that as well. And there's really no other way to change this orientation, at least as far as I have seen. However, when you really get out of kilter, you can use these icons in the menu bar. We can set our view back to a base, and then we can start over again. Not the worst thing ever, just a little annoyance that we have to deal with while using this software. Now let's move this model to the center of our build plate and start working on it. If I go to click on it and drag it, I can't do that. I can only move the camera around. We need to highlight and use this transform or move tool. Then after that, all the axes of our model are highlighted and we can use those to drag the model in place. Again, a slight peccadillo of the software. Is it really a bad user experience? Not really, but all these small annoyances begin to add up while you are using it. Now let's paint this model so it can be printed in two colors. You'll see I have PLA selected in both my filament slots at top. And if I looked at this menu here to the left, you won't find any paint option because it's not there. To find the paint section, we need to right click our model. A new set of options appears and we can select paint from them. Once you select paint, nothing new really happens. No menu opens up. There's no explanation of what we're doing here. A slider bar has appeared at the bottom of our screen. Not really sure what it's doing quite yet. But if I begin to click on the model, 
you'll see it does get painted. So now we have a two color model, light blue and tan for the base. If I click on another portion, well, now we have a three color model. We have a darker blue, a lighter blue, and then the tan base color. I have to assume one of these colors is a blend and one is going to be the actual second filament. I'm not sure though, because there's no menu, there's no explanation as to exactly what we're seeing here. Now, if I move this slider along, nothing happens, okay. If I move this side along, we can see parts of the boat are beginning to change color. I'm assuming this angle slider bar is what determines what triangles are being painted with which color. I'm not really sure, here we go, now it's working a little better. Not really sure how exactly it works, but it does have some function. Now, if we wanted to print this, we would have to save and print, but I don't see a save option anywhere. This is an undo button that goes back. If I hit exit, I lose all the painting I had already. So now if I wanted to go back in, if I right click on this model to try and save, there's also no save option here. So if I exit from here, again, I lose all my paint. Now imagine working on a model for 30 minutes, painting it, and then trying to save it, or at least looking for a save option. You're gonna pull your hair out because there is none apparent. You're gonna lose all your work. Now, I know there is a way to save it. I watched a few YouTube videos that described them at some point, but that was over a few weeks ago. At this point, I've lost any and all knowledge of this slicer, and I'm back to square one. We have no tooltips, we have no help menus, nothing here to guide us along this process and make it a little easier to navigate. Now, we have a purge block sitting next to our model, so if we, we go to what I think is the model file in this purge tower, if I drop this down, another menu of sub-model types appears. Again, might as well be hieroglyphics. I don't know what any of this is trying to tell us. As I hover over each of these, there's no explanation as to what they're doing. There's, of course, some titles under them that gives me an idea as to what they're doing, but some of these shapes are just foreign to me. I don't know what Tier Time or Up Studio is trying to tell me through them. Now, conversely, let's take a look at Orca Slicer. This is a fork of Bamboo Studio, which itself is a fork of Purusha Slicer. And now right in here, we're going to load the same model that we were using before, the 3D Benchy, right there. And now we can see up here on this icon menu, there's no option to paint. But if I go to the filament section, I add an additional filament. All of a sudden, this paint can option shows up, and it lets me know I can do some color painting. So we have the model selected, and I'll select color painting. Now when I select that, I'm brought to a different view of the model, and this smaller menu is brought up, which shows some of the painting options. And when I hover over them, you can see each little tooltip shows up. Now up here, I select the color I want to paint. And I can go ahead and start painting to my heart's desire. I can select different options, and they all perform different painting functions. When I'm done, I select off the model right here, and my progress has saved. And additionally, a purge tower is created for us. And this model is ready to be sliced and printed. And as you can see here, this is just a way more intuitive set of tools. It doesn't feel cumbersome. It doesn't really get in the way of the fun of 3D printing. Ultimately, how did I like this 3D printer? How was my experience? For me, it was not good. The main board gave out on me, the slicer was a chore. I didn't enjoy the time I spent with this printer whatsoever. Just because this printer isn't for me, that doesn't mean it's not necessarily the printer for you. If you are considering this printer for purchase, I want you to ask yourself three main questions. How much time do you have? Are the prints you're looking to accomplish really two colors? And what is your budget like? Now this is not a pick up and go printer. You are gonna to have to dedicate some serious time to it. And a lot of that's going to be with the slicer. And that is likely going to be knowledge that is not transferable to any other programs. This is proprietary software. It likely won't be able to help you if you move to Cura, Prusa, or any of its derivatives. And then consider the time you may spend replacing components, like what happened to me with the main board. Think about what you wanna print in multicolor. Choose some models. Are they really just two color prints? I was interested in printing multicolors about a year and a half ago. I got the Bamboo Labs X1 with the AMS four color system. And the thing that shocked me as I got into it 
was the amount of models that were way more than two colors. Even the four colors that the AMS offered was sometimes not enough for a single model. So peruse your model library, go through some websites you normally do, check out how many colors are really going to be needed. This Magneto toy I printed is mostly two colors except for the head. The head is five colors, purple and red for the helmet, tan for the skin color, white for the hair, and then the eyes are white and black. Now I cheated a little bit and I made the eyes purple, hoping no one would really notice, and you don't, but you can see the problem I'm talking about. You would think this is a mostly two color model, it's broken down in such a way, but for some parts, two colors is not nearly enough. And what is your budget? This is a $500 printer, that's pretty expensive. If we look at the time and the money cost, what do you value more? Would you be better suited buying a more inexpensive printer, printing your models in one color, and then painting them afterwards? The time sink would be in the painting, and you would save some money on your budget. If I had a more narrow budget to work with, that's absolutely what I would look to do. Buy an inexpensive printer, a Voxel Abaquila, an Ender 3, a Sovel SV06, print your models in a single color, and then concentrate on painting them. However, if your budget options are a little wider, you know you don't want to paint models, you want them to be printed, I would recommend looking into the Bamboo Labs series of printers. You can get a P1 series printer for about $600 now. You add on the AMS unit, which is a four color, four material system. That's about $1,000. It doubles your budget, but you're gonna get reliable, multicolored prints. And outside of the color changing system, those Bamboo Labs printers are just good. They are fast, they are self-calibrating, and the slicer is extremely intuitive. And that is the direction I would choose if budget wasn't really an option for me. And as a matter of fact, that is what I chose about a year and a half ago. And that printer, the X1 with the AMS system, has worked phenomenally for me on all my multicolor and multi-material prints. So ultimately, is this printer for you? Ask yourself the questions, give yourself the answers. If you have other questions, you don't know the answers, leave them below. I'll try and answer them. Other people in the community try and answer them. That's what this is all for, trying to help each other. And while you're at it, find the link to the Discord. Join the conversation over there. It is a group of like-minded individuals. We love 3D printing. We love talking about it and we love showing it off and we'd love to have you. So please join there. And if you like this video, you wanna see more like this, please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. You get notified when any of my videos get released. I also just created a Patreon page. If you wanna say thank you in that way, I truly appreciate it. You get access to some behind the scenes stuff. You will get videos a little earlier. I'm trying to widen the range of features that are available there or benefits that are available there. I currently wanna thank my one Patreon subscriber. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And now, as always, until next time, boys, girls, everyone else, keep on printing.